Now on 12 News, Bond posted the charges that Beaumont woman is facing after hitting a family of three with her car. Plus, stand up for what you truly believe. The final farewell for civil rights icon John Lewis. And the pandemic is taking its toll on lots of people. How it's impacting mental health all across the nation. New developments tonight, 21-year-old Kenley Davis has bonded out of jail after being charged with three counts of intoxication assault. Police say she is the woman responsible for hitting a family of three on Oak Trace Drive late last night. Thank you all so much for tuning in this afternoon. I'm Dejanit Garrison. Now, 12 News reporter Amelia White has been talking with police to find out exactly how this story unfolded. Amelia. Dage, we broke this story yesterday afternoon. A family out for a walk in this neighborhood, and then suddenly they were struck down by a car. It's something police say is uncommon. A mother, a father, and a daughter. A family of three were enjoying the Old Trace neighborhood Wednesday night when a driver slammed into them. When police arrived, the three victims were hurt and rushed to the hospital. Police have identified the driver as 21-year-old Kinley Davis. Police say they believe she was driving under the influence. Authorities say Davis took off after crashing into the family, but she was later found in the backyard of a home in the neighborhood. Davis was taken to the hospital and later booked in Jefferson County Jail. She faces three counts of intoxication manslaughter and three counts of failure to stop and render aid. This was a very unusual situation. Um, it's sad and it brings to light the importance of um, why it's against the law and dangerous to drive while intoxicated. Coming up tonight at 6, police share their thoughts on the family's recovery. In Beaumont, Amelia White, 12 News. Well, after six days of paying tribute to the life and the legacy of the iconic giant, Representative John Lewis, he was finally laid to rest today in Atlanta. ABC's Andrew Dimbert shares rather his final farewell. Final goodbyes. The funeral service for Representative John Lewis taking place Thursday, closing an historic chapter in American history. Oh, Lord, we need to right now. Former President Barack Obama delivering the eulogy, paying tribute to Lewis's life and legacy. John Lewis will be a founding father of that fuller, fairer, better America. Two other former presidents, George W. Bush and Bill Clinton, also attending the private funeral at the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, which Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once led. We live in a better and nobler country today because of John Lewis. He kept moving. He hoped for and imagined and lived and worked and moved for his beloved community. Lewis died on July 17th after a months long battle with pancreatic cancer. He spent his entire life fighting not just for civil rights of African Americans, but for the rights of all people who suffered social injustices. He played an instrumental role in the passage of the landmark Voting Rights Act in 1965, fought for equality for LGBT Americans, and marched with Parkland, Florida students in wake of the tragic school shooting. He held speeches and led demonstrations, letting his voice be heard so that others would no longer suffer in silence. In making sure his cause lives on after his death, Lewis wrote an essay shortly before he died and was published posthumously in the New York Times. In it, Lewis implores the next generation to keep fighting, telling them it is your turn to let freedom ring. I'm here today to pay tribute to a man that was larger than life. Hundreds gathered outside of the church while the funeral was underway. While on Capitol Hill, where Lewis didn't just talk change, he walked it. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi offering these words about her friend and colleague. We always knew he worked on the side of the angels. And now he is with them. May he rest in peace. Lewis's final resting place, the Southview Cemetery in Atlanta, Georgia. Lewis spent more than three decades in Congress representing Georgia's 5th Congressional District, and it is in that state where he will rest in peace. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. 
Well, several Republican congressional members are openly rejecting President Trump's suggestion to delay the November elections. In a tweet this morning, the president claimed mail-in voting would be the most inaccurate and fraudulent one in history. The president went on to tweet that the mail-in voting is, quote, already proving to be a catastrophic disaster. The presidential election is set for November 3rd, which President Trump does not have the authority to change. We are watching the tropics this weekend as tropical storm Isaias makes its way towards Florida. And Chief Meteorologist Patrick Vaughn is in the Storm Tracker Center. It's not near us, Patrick, but something to definitely keep an eye on. Sure, right? it's not going to be an issue for us at all, Dejanique. It'll be well off towards our east. Unfortunately, could uh, fl affect uh, the east coast of Florida. Right now, it's over uh, Hispaniola, really the Dominican Republic, moving very quickly to the northwest at 20 miles an hour. Much improved satellite uh, presentation, as you can see. Winds are at 60 miles an hour, and uh, this is going to become a hurricane, unfortunately, as it heads very close to the coastline of Florida, then heads off towards the Outer Banks as we head on into early next week, well to our east. Otherwise, here locally, looking pretty quiet. Uh, nothing on radar with mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. Temperatures in the lower 90s in the triangle to the low to mid 90s in the lakes area, and that means heat in the seas are in the triple digits. We'll fall out of the 90s this evening on into the lower 80s by 10 p.m. And a scattering of showers and storms expected this weekend, particularly Saturday. More on that forecast coming up on 12 News. New numbers tonight as we continue tracking COVID-19. Beaumont is reporting 35 new cases today, which is an increase since our last report. But there is some good news on hospitalizations. Numbers dropping to 69 patients in general beds and 26 in ICU for Jefferson County. Former Republican presidential candidate Herman Cain has died after a battle with COVID-19. Cain ran for president back in 2012. The news was released in a statement on his personal website saying he was considered part of the high risk group because of his history with cancer. In an obituary, family members say he was affectionately called the boss and that the world has suffered a major loss due to his death. He was 74 years old. And in financial news, the U.S. economy shrank at a dizzying 32.9% last quarter, making it by far the worst quarterly plunge ever. Tens of millions of Americans lost their jobs when the pandemic caused businesses to shut down all across the country. The unemployment rate surged to nearly 15%. Now, just last week, more than 1.43 million Americans filed for first-time unemployment claims. Economists say it could take years for our economy to make a full recovery. New at five, a closer look at just how the coronavirus pandemic is affecting us on a day to day basis. 12 News investigator Lauren Hensley is live with more and Lauren, the impacts are being felt more now than even back in the spring, right? Yeah, Dejanique, that's what the new data is revealing. Now, it says Americans think that the worst is yet to come in this pandemic and that the mental health aspect of this all, it's just piling up, weighing on our shoulders. The nonprofit Kaiser Family Foundation surveyed more than 1,300 adult Americans. They found out that half say worry and stress from COVID-19 has had a negative impact on their mental health. This is up significantly from just 39% in May. One of the most troubling findings in this survey, though, was most don't see the light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to the COVID-19 pandemic. Most adults feel the worst effects of the pandemic are still yet to come. And 7 in 10 rate the federal government response to the pandemic as fair or poor, with, one in, with 4 in 10 Republicans rating the government negatively. A clear majority of those surveyed believe more federal dollars should go into effects to limit the spread of the virus, such as testing, contact tracing, and PPE for essential workers. This survey survey looks also at parents' concerns as kids are heading back to class. We'll tell you what that survey has to say, say coming up tonight at 6. Lauren Hensley, 12 News.
For the first time, Vanessa Guillen's family is meeting with President Donald Trump. Together with their attorney, the family is proposing the hashtag I am Vanessa Guillen bill to the president. That bill will allow active duty service members to file sexual harassment and assault claims to a third party agency rather than their chain of command. Vanessa's sister Lupe spoke passionately at a rally before meeting with the president this morning. And she says she is not going to stop fighting for Vanessa. Because Vanessa, you're here in this wherever you are. You know, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to be silent. Because you told me to never give up. You told me to go for it. No matter what the people say, you go for it. Do the right thing. President Trump says the family has his support and that he will personally help with funeral expenses. Ahead tonight, the schedule is out. What you can expect at the Democratic National Convention during this pandemic. And next, the House passes a new law for rideshare companies, how they hope to keep passengers safe. Classics Hot Summer Nights is the...